a modern and multi-capable Navy responsive to our maritime nation's defense and development by 2028. This is the Philippine Navy vision. Making full use of technological advancement in naval technology and warfare, the Philippine Navy has continuously pushed for its modernization through the acquisition of modern naval assets. From frigates to missile systems, the Navy is not backing down from not only realizing its vision, but fulfilling its mission as well. Specifically aimed to increase the Navy's littoral defense capability, the PN embarked on a 10 billion acquisition project, the Fast Attack Interdiction Craft Missile, or FIAC-M. Also complementing the self-reliant defense posture program, the FIAC-M project is expected to revitalize the Philippine Navy's shipbuilding capability. FIAC-M or the Fast Attack Interdiction Craft Missile Project includes uh, the uh, delivery of platforms together with uh, transfer of technology from the uh, design up to the uh, actual construction so that the Navy can uh, revive its uh, shipbuilding capability. First and foremost, Natscom will benefit on this project in terms of the uh, facility, uh, like uh, what we can see at the Naval Shipbuilding Center now. We now have these two new refurbished hangars with equipment inside, together with the, the trailers where the uh, ship will be constructed. Meanwhile, the Naval Sea Systems Command published a strategy for the revitalization of naval shipbuilding in 2021. When the team crafted the strategy, the purpose really is to create a roadmap on how the Philippine Navy, specifically the naval shipyard, can revive its in-house capability in building ships. The strategy is composed of three phases. The phase one of the strategy is to establish a startup capability for the naval shipyard, utilizing the technical know-how of our personnel acquired from the ISL. And it also includes the equipment and facility upgrade, specifically the naval shipbuilding facility and warehouses. On the second phase, it involves the reinforcement of the technical know-how. So this includes additional development of the workforce, of equipment, of facility, in order for the naval shipyard to be upgraded as a Class C shipyard based on marina standard. Finally, for the third phase of this strategy, the goal is to um, have continuous improvement in the shipbuilding and ship repair capability of nav ship. So the purpose is to construct other classes and sizes of ship in-house. Considered as a lost capability, building ships in the city of Cavite date back as early as the Spanish occupation in 16th century. Initially built to cater to the needs of the Spanish galleon, Cavite Puerto flourished from being a fishing village into a port town where galleon ships were both repaired and constructed. But by the end of 1898, the Americans took possession of the former Spanish arsenal and shipyard in Cavite, where an outdated machinery were modernized. The Cavite Navy Yard eventually became the primary repair and refueling base for the United States Asiatic Fleet. Unfortunately, by the 1940s, most of the yard facilities were destroyed due to the wars that ensued. And with the establishment of the Philippine government, defense arms soon followed, with the Army and the Navy being created first. By the 1970s, a challenge was posed to the Philippine Navy to become self-reliant and ensure it can build its own ships. By the 60s down to the 80s, one of the first vessels was the 37-meter uh, patrol boat. That's one of the first vessels constructed here, followed by the ferro-cement boat, and then the swamp boat, and some of the other ships. One of its uh, glory days, as what I have been told, was Kagitingan class, the patrol gunboat of the Kagitingan class. The actual design was based uh, in Germany, in West Germany, and then the others were built here. There were three or four of the vessels that were, were built here in uh, Kabita DBR. Almost 50 years after its decline, the shipbuilding capability of the Navy is now within reach. There were 17 personnel set to missile to undergo transfer of technology training for six months. It was composed of five officers, 11 enlisted personnel, and one civilian. 
human resource. So the main purpose of the training is the transfer of technology for the construction of 5M. The trainees were involved in the basic procedures of shipbuilding. We were integrated into the engineering department. The trainees were exposed to the design of the 5M. In the production department, the trainees were involved into the actual construction of the FAIKM. In, in some parts of hull construction, in the electrical, in machinery, in uh, painting, carpentry. With the completion of the training of NSSE personnel in Israel Shipyards Limited and the construction of the shipbuilding facility, Phase 2 of the NSSE strategy is set to happen. Meanwhile, the inclusion of the FAIKM project's expansion into the Horizon 3 of the AFP Modernization Program and the continued support of the legislation further strengthens the SRDP cause. So with this transfer of technology, I envision the Naval Shipbuilding Center to bring back those glory days of uh, constructing or designing our own vessels. We can start with small boats first and then move up a notch higher, perhaps even medium-sized ships. I would like to assure you that those experts, those people will be retained in this command for us to be able to achieve whatever outcome of the transfer of technology that is being given to us by our partners in Israel. The realization of the FAIGAM acquisition project with the revival of the shipbuilding capability opens a myriad of opportunities not only for the Navy or the AFP, but especially for the maritime industry and the Philippine economy. Increased littoral capability for maritime defense. An avenue where advancements in naval and maritime technology can flourish through forged partnerships and collaborations with other nations. Employment opportunities for skilled and technical labor and increased demand for specialist equipment and a steady supply chain. The potential to export products and services. All this combined translate to creating a modern and multi-capable stance for the Philippines to secure its maritime interest while optimally utilizing its own resources.